Those behind the push to form the Collingwood Football Club had only a week between the meeting at which Britannia had agreed to support them, and the meeting of the VFA at which they would present their case. But they weren't worried, they felt they had a strong case and would be able to convince the VFA's committee of its merits. But two hurdles emerged almost immediately, one procedural and the other social. The first concerned the number of clubs in the VFA. Fearful of its ranks being swelled by uncompetitive clubs, the association had earlier that year introduced a rule limiting the number of participating clubs to 12, plus 3 in Ballarat. As things stood, it seemed that Collingwood would need a club to drop out and create a vacancy before it could be considered for inclusion. Either that or the VFA would have to change its rules. The second hurdle was perhaps even more significant, although less overtly obvious. There is no doubt that Collingwood's social standing cost it dearly. There was a prejudice against the slum dwellers having their own football team to play against established clubs such as Ascendon, Melbourne, Carlton and Geelong. This led to a campaign being waged against Collingwood's admittance to the VFA. That campaign started almost as soon as news of the June 7 meeting came to light. And it was led by the Evening Standard newspaper, which pulled no punches in its opposition, mocking the motives of those behind the push and declaring that, although the dignity of Collingwood would be raised by the possession of a senior football club, it could not and should not be allowed to happen. This was, the paper said, a useless errand and one which would only see people bumping their heads against stone walls. As the campaign against Collingwood intensified, it also broadened. The standard questioned, for example, whether Britannia really had been successful enough to justify inclusion ahead of a rival junior team such as North Park which had won four junior premierships, but had no ground of its own and did not represent a distinct suburb. Papers like the Standard weren't brazen enough to openly object to Collingwood's admission on the grounds of social status. But the bias was real, you could see it in the mocking tones and condescending language used whenever...